Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to episode 18 of Game Programming. So yesterday we took a look at actually implementing the key handler class or the keyboard class, um, which actually uh, um, we were able to print out true when we pressed the up arrow and uh, false if, if it was released, if it wasn't pressed. So um, today we're actually going to take a look at actually, I guess, putting this to use. So now obviously we've got a way to actually um, gather key inputs and we can record them, but how do we actually use this to animate our, our tile, our map? Um, and what we'll do first is actually get rid of this um, printing thing. So we, uh, we, don't, we don't do that. One, one thing that you can actually do is, um, is actually do this, right? What you can do is you can actually scan through every single one um, so like keys.length, right? Every single one of these keys. And what you can do is say, if, you know, keys i uh, is true, right? Then what you can actually do is print um, system.out.println. You can print the key that is pressed. And this is just like for fun so we can see. Um, which one we print. So if we just type this real quick um, and do this, what you'll get is, oh, make sure you print um, the, we won't exactly know which key, but if you actually just print I, you'll actually know what, which key ID it is. So if we print, if we go uh, up, you can see that's key number 38. Uh, if we had if we hit W, that's K eighty seven. A is sixty five. D is sixty eight. S is eighty three. Down is forty. Left is thirty seven, thirty nine, thirty eight. So thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine. So left, up, right, down is how it's rolling. But yeah, that's just like a little fun little thing um, that you can do to actually find out the IDs of the keys. So in other words, how this stores. As you can see, we we didn't actually get anything. If I just open the console here. We didn't actually get anything higher than 87. So in other words, what I'm saying is 120 should probably be fine. Now notice if we had put this to 85 and we tried, I think it was the W key, right? Well, first of all, it crashed straight away. And the reason it crashed was the up key, the W key was simply above that. As you can see, it's the W key here is 87 and we limited it to 85. So that's a little more in-depth understanding onto why we put 120 here. It, yeah, we just want to we, we just want to have enough enough variables here, enough booleans in this array to actually store a boolean for every every key on our keyboard. Okay. Now, actually applying this now is um, relatively simple. All right. If we go back into our game.java class, we see that we actually have access to the key class, of course, through our little. Um, keyboard key uh, declaration here. Now what we can do is we've currently got it moving through this and to actually have it move when we press the appropriate key, we can simply type if key dot up for our up key equals true, right? If key dot up, um, then let's just y minus minus, right? Because it'll actually drag our map up. And similarly, if I just get rid of this, we can do the same thing for all of our other little controls. So key dot down will be y plus plus, key dot left will be um, x minus minus, and key dot right will be x plus plus. So if we, uh, if we launch this, you'll see um, that I'm just pressing the arrow keys now, and you can see that our map is indeed moving. Now it looks like it's actually, I can, I can see it on my computer, it's lagging like crazy, even though we're at 2000 FPS, that's because of my screen recorder. So if this turns out laggy, if this, if this turns out laggy for you guys on the video, that's, uh, that's the screen recorder's fault, okay? If you do it yourselves on your computer, you should get no lag. Obviously we're at 2000 frames per second here. Um, but yeah, you can see that I'm actually able to uh, move myself around the map to my pleasing, um, simply by adding, you know, a few lines of code. So, um, so yeah, and we can actually, uh, we can actually start to do something with this now. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of game programming guys. If you did, please hit the like button and I'll see you guys tomorrow where we'll 
move on into creating our game. Actually, one quick thing I want to address. A lot of people seem to be asking if this game will be multiplayer. Now, I did mention that this game will be like Realm of the Mad God. And as you know, Realm of the Mad God is multiplayer. So yes, this game that we're making here, Rain, will be multiplayer, okay? The, the idea of the series is to create Realm of the Mad God from scratch. Simple as that. I'm not even going to say a game like Realm of the Mad God, because what we're going to do at first is basically create Realm of the Mad God from scratch. And then from there, and then from there, you know, we'll obviously modify it and and um, do whatever whatever it is we need to do. But one thing that I really wanted to stress real quick, guys, is that um, I really want to involve you guys in this series. So when we actually come to designing things and actually, you know, making core gameplay decisions, I'll definitely um, get you guys into this and make sure that you guys have a have a say in what you get taught, I guess, and what, what this series really becomes. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's, that's episode, which, what episode was this? Uh, it's uh, 18. Yep. <laughs> that's episode 18 of game programming guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did add it to your favorites, hit the like button and I'll see you guys. See you guys tomorrow with a brand new episode. Later guys. Mm -hmm.